For about five or six years, I've been collecting CDs, and I've accumulated about seven or eight hundred, give or take. What I also like to do is, as a bit of a completionist, I like to collect every single, at least, studio album of some of my favorite bands. And I've accomplished that with a couple. And I decided, why not start a series out, kind of like Anthony Fantano does with his stuff. I don't really see many people talking about bands like Slick Shoes, or MXPX, or S Screeching Weasel, who are today's episodes, uh, kind of like Worst to Best Album. I see people kind of like, on like Facebook groups do that, but I never actually see Anthony Fantano style shit like that, unless it's like some huge popular pop punk band, like Blink, or All Time Low, or something like that. And I like those bands, I might even cover them myself, but yeah, so I decided, you know what, why not make a once in a while kind of series. So here is the 12, or 13 if you count the Kill the Musicians comp. Let's uh, rank their albums worst to best. Now, unsettling and unflattering, controversy aside, Screeching Weasel is definitely one of my favorite bands. Hell, one of the very first songs that I ever wrote for my band, The Stinky Meatballs, was heavily inspired by the likes of Jughead and Danny Vapid's guitar playing and their, you know, melodic songwriting and shit. And if you don't believe me, here is a snippet of Hey Suburbia. And the first ever Stinky Meatball song, You're Too Young to Bitch by Being Old. Originality's a bitch, ain't it? But anyway, I decided to listen to about six hours of Screeching Weasel songs throughout the past few days, and I decided, you know what? Let's rank these. Now to kick it off, the worst album is... Bark Like a Dog. Now, my intention with this series is not to absolutely bash what ends up falling under the worst. Because if I'm reviewing a band, I like every single one of their albums. If it's last, I just enjoy it the least and that's kind of where bark like a dog falls you know it's just kind of generic you know there, it just seems like an al it sounds like an album of b-sides which is kind of fucking weird because higher up on this list than this album is a compilation of unreleased i would assume b-sides i mean if you enjoy them a lot and you're still kind of looking for a fix there you go coming in at number 12 emo again not necessarily the best album. It is a little better than Bark Like a Dog, but um, the songs are a little bit more, as the album is called, a little bit on the emo side, but not in the sense of like the actual like emo genre. I guess what kind of gives the album a little bit more credit is that in the CD, I think there was a paragraph written about how they had very little to no time in this studio. So what they did was they all went and did a couple takes each on their own of the songs on the album, and then they went in to record the songs. I think they did two takes each, and they picked the best one. And in that sense, the album's pretty damn good, but the songs themselves just really don't stand out. After Emo, we have the infamous self-titled. Why is it infamous? I don't fucking know. One thing I will say about this one and the one that came after that, which is, of course, higher up on this list, we have um, probably the most all over the place records in the discography. Before the Ramones core pop punk direction that they had, they went a little bit more of a let's just play as fast as we fucking can kind of things and let's have our songs be about the dumbest shit we can come up with. And in a sense, the album is very fun. It gives off a jackass vibe to me. Occasionally, I'll pull this record out and be like, you know what, yeah, this is this is a fun record. It's got some good songs on it. It was a little bit before the melodic parts that I enjoy a little bit more, but still, it's a fun record. Kill the Musicians. Now, this one is the only album on here that is not a studio album, but more so a compilation. For a compilation of B-sides and basically demos, it's pretty fucking good. I'm not gonna lie. Like, some of these songs, I'm very genuinely surprised that, you know, didn't make the cut for the records that they might have been on for whatever reason. 
Not to mention some of the Ramones covers they had from their, you know, cover album. Those are some pretty tight fucking Ramones covers. I'm not going to lie. Those are pretty good. Up next, we have Wiggle. This one is kind of a little bit on the generic side as well in the sense that it doesn't necessarily have any extremely iconic songs, but I never got bored listening to it. It's definitely not the best production quality. It is still a great record. If I'm going like this throughout the entire record, then it's it's a pretty damn good record. I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed listening to it. After Wiggle, we have How to Make Enemies and Irritate People. This one is a very fun record. I think the best part about it is that it featured Mike Dirt of Green Day on bass. And you can definitely tell with a lot of different songs that he has the same kind of consistency that he did on like Green Day's Dookie or Insomniac records. And uh, yeah, to kind of give a perspective of how mature the album is, the very first thing you hear when you hit play is a fart. Take that what you will. Up next is Anthem for a New Tomorrow. For a lot of Screeching Weasel fans, this is their favorite. And though it is not necessarily my personal favorite, considering this list is very subjective, I can definitely understand why a lot of people like this record. Hell, my Carrera of MXPX's favorite song, Leather Jacket, is on this record. And it's an enjoyable record. Like, it really is. Every night, uh, Leather Jacket. Um, one of the more unique songs that Screeching Weasel ever did was I, Robot, and I'm just gonna call it right here. I guarantee you the Lillingtons took heavy fucking inspiration from that song, at least. Because I know Cody Templeman really likes themes like that. Just listen to the Lillingtons. Not to mention that one instrumental track they have is catchy as all hell. It's just such a great record, and it's not necessarily, uh, that I think this record is flawed in any way, but there are other albums I enjoy just a little bit more than this one. But still, it's a high point for Screeching Weasel for this one. Teen Punks in Heat. Absolutely love this record. This is, I don't know if it's a popular or unpopular opinion considering this is Ramon's score, but I really like the more upbeat songs that Screeching Weasel puts out. Uh, especially sometimes if they have irregular time signatures, kind of like I don't want to be a, or, or I want to be a homosexual, or like all worked up. Um, but yeah, I really like their kind of like their funner, kind of like not to be taken seriously, faster songs. And this album has a lot of them, and I really enjoy all of them. Like I really do. There are some low points in this record, but there are a lot of honorable mentions that I could have for my favorites. And uh, yeah. This record is uh, definitely, it's one of their, uh, not the best newer ones, but it's a newer record they have that is, it's decent. It's decent for being a recent record. I think it was album number, off the top of my head, I think it was number nine. Nine or ten. So they had a good amount of records before this, and they still had it up to this point. Up next is the latest album they put out. They pushed the release date forward because of this COVID-19 bullshit. Some freaks of atavism. This was a great fucking release. Seriously, it was. It gets better every single fucking time I listen to it. It goes from She Ain't Your Baby to Bleed Through Me. It's fucking amazing. Not to mention their song Settle In is one of the best Screeching Weasel songs I've ever heard. Kind of bums me out that they don't have any hard copies pressed for this, but even if they did, I don't think it would really be uh, kind of practical in this time because I don't think we can mail stuff out, or if we can, it's very rare. Very couple of good songs, and it's definitely a great record. Like, it's seriously, for a, new, for a newer Screeching Weasel record, dude, they still have this shit. After that surprisingly good record, we have Television City Dream. This one is very fun to listen to, from start to finish. Even the, uh, even the couple bonus tracks, including that Vindictives cover, is pretty good. We have some short songs, we have some funny songs, we got some softer, kind of like, uh, slower songs, but 
Overall, this is a clever record. It really is. Especially Punk Rock Explained. I mean, the band's big enough to have toured. They know what it's like, and they can comedically, and making a catchy song, explain, you know, what the fuck happens when you blow up, in a sense. Maybe not necessarily be the next Blink-182 or Green Day, but, you know, it's a fun song. Kind of a reality check a little bit. Now we're at the home stretch. This is the final three albums on the list. These three albums I absolutely love and will never get tired of. Number three on the list is First World Manifesto. The second latest Screeching Weasel record as of 2020, and it is one of my absolute favorites of theirs. Ramon's core guitar solos are never really that difficult to play, they can still be very fucking catchy and fun to play, but they're not difficult. This record on the other fucking hand, with songs like Totem Pole, Three Lonely Days, or Three Lonely Nights, I don't fucking know, and watch the violence inherent in the system, I think? Those songs have fucking amazing guitar solos. They're not Eddie Van Halen eruption shit, but they're still, like, they fucking really add some punch to these fucking songs. The album starts off amazing with Follow Your Leaders, which is, you know, kind of makes fun of groupthink, which I kind of enjoy. At the very end, Little Big Man talks about, you know, people on the internet that like to complain, and I hate that too, so I like that as, an, as a song ending. It's really cool. It's a good ender. But, uh, yeah, as much as I love this record, I like two other records of theirs a little bit more. Number two, Boogada, Boogada, Boogada. This album is the better of the two first records that they made. They are both very all over the place. But this one, they had a lot more melodic songs than the other one. As all over the place as it is, kind of has, like, you know, good pacing. It goes all over the place, but it's very fun doing it. It doesn't overstay its welcome either, even though it's 26 songs. And the number one best Screeching Weasel album, in my opinion, my brain hurts. This album is Screeching Weasel at their best. No doubt about it. The production is not necessarily as good as their, like, you know, later albums, like, First World Manifesto or uh, Television City Dream, but this album is, it's just them at their best. They didn't necessarily, I wouldn't say they necessarily peaked here because they still make good songs, but this album definitely has a lot more enjoyable songs than a lot of their other stuff. And a lot of people can agree that this is, uh, even if it's not their favorite, it's definitely in their top five or maybe even top threes. But yeah, this album I definitely get a lot of enjoyment out of. It's definitely uh, this era that I take a lot of inspiration personally from when I write songs sometimes in the Ramones core style because I don't just write Ramones core for my band personally, but it's still um, the melodic parts of it. I definitely take a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of inspiration. But yeah, so um, yeah, Ramones core at its best. My brain hurts. If you wanted to get into this band, you start here, and then work your way around. 